I'm Steve Moulter. We are coming to you from the IoT World Forum in Chicago. And today I'm joined by Mary Lynn Nielsen and by Oleg Logvanov from IEEE. And we're very, very glad to have them here with us today to talk about IEEE and how it connects to the IoT. A little bit about my guests today. Mary Lynn Nielsen has worked in the standards field for over 25 years now, supporting the creation of the industry consensus at the IEEE Standards Association. She's currently the Technology Initiative Director for the IEEE SA, overseeing its Emerging Technologies Program and engaging in active outreach. Mary Lynn has received the IEEE Computer Society Certificate of Appreciation, as well as an Appreciation Award from the IEEE SA Standards Board. Mary Lynn, it's great to have you here with us this morning. Thanks, Thanks for being for here. Thanks for having me here, Steve. My pleasure. Oleg Logvanov is Director of Special Assignments in ST Microelectronics Industrial and Power Conversion Division. He's held various senior technical and executive management positions in the telecommunications and semiconductor industry. And today he's chair of the IEEE P2413 standard for an architectural framework for the Internet of Things Working Group. Mr. Logvanov serves on the IEEE Standards Association Corporate Advisory Group and the IEEE SA Standards Board, and he also happens to have 20 patents to his credit. So Oleg, so glad I'm, to have you with us. I'm delighted to be here. All right, great. So let's go ahead and let's dive in and begin by talking about what makes IoT such an exciting technology for us today. IoT is not just a technology. It's a combination of many technologies, but also new business models, and most importantly, the horizontal nature of IoT. IoT cuts across many verticals, verticals that traditionally have not worked together, have not collaborated. Think about our smartphone, it's a great example. A city of Boston is an example, using smartphones to identify potholes. We're using our smartphones to track our fitness progress. We use them to navigate through the cities. We use them to purchase things and Google something online. So, Smartphone is exactly the example of this horizontal nature of the platform that enables a lot of things and actually many new things that haven't been known before to the industry. Very good. So Mary Lynn, why don't we talk then about that capability and specifically the IEEE vision that connects to it? Sure, with the IEEE, interestingly, it's one of the most broadly based technological organizations out there. IEEE has over 40 societies and councils that are devoted to all different aspects of technology. The breadth of it from power industries down to the latest of what's happening in IT is what IEEE does. And therefore it has the ability to bring people from all those different technologies together. And in the same way that we see that horizontal cross-cutting nature happening in IoT, we see that IEEE can help serve that and help facilitate the growth of this particular industry. Good, so again, a lot of expansive capability on that in the directions that we can take it. In terms of enabling the IoT ecosystem, how do you see IEEE being uniquely suited to enable these capabilities? It's a great question. You mentioned that I'm a member of Corporate Advisory Group of IEEE SA. It's a very important task that we're trying to undertake. Corporate Advisory Group represents over 200 corporate entities that are getting involved with the development of standards and development of the technology. We're trying to bring together over 40 societies and councils that we have in IEEE with the industry and create this tremendous collaboration that spans across education, conferences, platforms that we create through the publications, and of course, standards development as well as the pre-standardization, post-standardization activities. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely important. And by the way, the birth of the 2413 project, an architectural framework for Internet of Things, was through this corporate advisory group. We have conducted a lot of seminars and workshops around the world, talked to the industry, and we realized we need an overarching standard. That's how we arrived at the birth of the standard sponsored by the Corporate Advisory Group. Very good. Let's do a little combination here to wrap things up of maybe, say, the top three challenges that we currently feel need to be resolved in order for IoT to reach its full potential. And based on that, where we see things going, maybe in the three to five year time frame. Well, of course, a global industry collaboration that cuts across many verticals is a must. That's something we need to achieve. We need to solve the issues of security, data protection, and privacy because we have these platforms that now caters to so many applications that now have an opportunity to compromise the integrity of the system. And of course, we need to learn how to identify things, not only things, but also the sources and cons consumers of data. I think it's particularly important with identity to remember that all of us do have different persona in our lives. 
And yet right now, we tend to think of us as one person. We're not. We have multiple needs, and we need to look at that within industry and address it and identify that. And I think IEEE, with its connections to research through the university connections it has, through education, where we can train not only the companies but the users that way as to what can be happening, we have an advantage to be able to assist industry to achieve these goals and therefore achieve IEEE's mission of enabling technology for humanity and bringing IoT to the world. It's fantastic. It's a big story and it's really a very exciting story. And thanks to the two of you for uh, allowing IEEE to contribute to that story in such fantastic ways. It's been a pleasure to talk with you both. Thanks, Thank you Steve. so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And thanks to all of you for tuning in as well.